Hey, who that? R.I.P. Tom Benson. Shout out to the whole Who That Nation. Now, who that? That fever, that flavor, that funk. I say, who that? That fever, that flavor, that funk. Oh, who that? That fever, that flavor, that funk. I say, who that? That fever, that flavor, that funk. You got that fever? Yeah, yeah, that fever for the flavor. Got that flavor? Yeah, yeah. See, we not equal, my people I'm like that dog saint Underneath the steeple, my people Got Drew Brees, he the feature And our defense, the sequel The D-line and linebackers Man, they come in the reach of Make enemies some believers Cause we overachievers DBC 50-50 balls And we call them keepers Y'all can follow this leader Cause Sean Payton will teach ya Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. New Orleans Dot Football Podcast brought to you by Sant CPA live from the Better Call Bado Podcast Studio. We're less than 24 <laughs> hours away from the draft. It's it feels here, like bro. the longest and slowest buildup of all time, but it is finally here, and the Saints will finally draft a player or maybe two. We'll see what happens uh, tomorrow. But um, I'm ready, man. I'm ready to see what happens. Uh, what's going on with you, Kevin? I got one question for you, Nick. Do you miss me? <laughs> hey, man, I'm uh, I'm locked in on the draft right now, so I'm not I'm not really oh, thinking of anything. I'm just I'm just I'm locked in on point. 16. I'm locked in on 19. I need to know what's going to happen. If they're going to pick in those spots. If they're going to move up, we're going to talk about all of that stuff. You don't have to but, lie from Mickey Loomis. You say a lot without saying nothing, right? <laughs> but first, are you a business owner needing some guidance with your daily accounting? Daniel Sant CPA can help get your finances in order. They provide relevant accounting information, detailed analysis, and clear communication in a timely manner. Call today, 318-321-2765, or visit santcpa.com. All that's in the show notes. And if you need legal help with any of the following car wrecks, offshore injuries, 18-wheeler collisions, Maritime and Jones Act, hurricane and storm claims, you better call Bado at 504-323-4777 or 985-677-1085 for your free consultation in case review, BadoLaw.com. Also in the show notes, and check out our guys at uh, Firehouse Subs, Veterans Boulevard location, great people, great folks. Jag's probably one of the best dudes in the city, so support him so he can keep doing good for everybody else. Then look, and I'm just going to say, if you know what the Maritime and Jones Act is, you better just call Bado because if you know what that is, you are in significant trouble and you need help because nobody knows what that is until they need to know what it is. So one of these days I'm going to Google it. Um, but yeah, just check out our sponsors if you need any of that stuff and they will take care of you. Shout out to the sponsors. Shout out to the sponsors. Yeah. Draft week. It, it felt like, just mm. to you, did this draft did this draft lead up? Did it feel longer than normal to you, or did it feel like is it like this? Do we say the same thing every year? Oh, this is the longest draft season, or did this one feel like a little bit different? Uh it's the longest draft season of all time. <laughs> I get the feel, I, I get the same we'll feeling. Say. I don't know what we'll say next year, but right now it is the longest draft season of all time. And it does. It just feels a little bit drawn out. And look, I'll be like, I'll be real. Like, I can even feel like draft fatigue uh, within the fan base a little more so than than usual. Uh, yeah. It just, it's just felt like the last week or so that that just, you know, it's just kind of been like. It, it just feels like all the haze in the barn, and it, it felt like it got there a little bit earlier than other years. And we're just kind of waiting to see what happens. And yeah, I think that out, but. I think the need. And look, I mean, I think. You know, and there's some division in the fan base right now. You know, I just call it like it is. But I think that just with the need of at wide receiver, um, I think like there's so much discussion around it and there's so much friction around it from so many different people. And there's, you know, there's so many parties that believe one thing should happen. And, and it's fine because it's fun draft talk. It's not like super negative. And division is the wrong word, but it's a lot of debate. Maybe debate is the right word. But yeah, I, I I see a lot of that, and so it's it's like the same discussions are being rehashed over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and it's just like the same points um, being spoken about. And so, to me, that's kind of what makes it seems like it's drawn out like super long because it's like, you know, it's the same wide receiver, you know, argument that is happening in every thread on Twitter, you know, which is where Saints, 
you know, that's where Saints Twitter lives. Twitter, right? The name is in there. So that's kind of where it comes from, from on, on my end, at least. I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -mm. So you brought up the wide receivers. What if I told you, and I don't, I, I'm not sure on the specific range. I saw a stat the other day, and I, like, I should have wrote it down so I could re recite it precisely. But the main talking points here, I'm going to hit. Yeah. What if I told you that in recent history, going back a decent amount of years, that wide receivers drafted in the second round are more likely to make the Pro Bowl than wide receivers in the first round? Would that change your thought process about the approach they should take? Like, is you feel the same level of urgency on where that pick has to be made, knowing that? I, and I think I, third round guys had the same success rate of making the Pro Bowl as first round guys. Third round, second, and second round was the most successful out of the three. Well, so I knew second round because, I mean, Saints fans should know we got Mike here, right? And then you look at I think it was the 2017 draft: DK Metcalf, McLaurin, AJ Brown, and Devo Samuels. Right. And so I get that. I get that. Oh, that's a good question. That's it should. It should change my thought process behind I'll, it. Right. I'll give you my take while you will you marinate on that for a second. Because I kinda hit yeah. you with that out of nowhere. You uh, yeah, that's a good question though. It's like it's something I'd ask you out the blue, that not vice versa. <laughs> so my take on it is like it, it that's fine. It to me that stat says it more so that it's harder that it's hard to to precisely scout wide receivers and there's a decent bust rate and it's just kind of the second round thing i think is just a weird luck thing um just kind of like yeah. a weird aberration within the in the data set i i still want to see i want to see the saints attack it i still want to see them attack it i still want to see them go at it early i want them to see see them draft somebody in the first round i want to see their best shot at addressing this massive need and doing it early is yeah. their best shot they're placing their bet on the guy that they have the strongest scouting information on at that point to me in my perception. And that, that could be, that could just be wrong. They, they could scout these guys and be like, we know this guy in the second round is just as good and maybe better than some of these guys, but the perception of it, I want to see them do it early in, in the long run. If they wait until another round or they do something different, if it works out, all the anxiety right now isn't felt and it doesn't matter and it goes away and it's just yeah. all noise really. But I, I don't care about any of that. Like after seeing what happened last year, I just want to see them take their best shot. And I want to see that pick early in the draft. And I, I want, I want tomorrow night to end with somebody in the fold. And that's just yeah. kind of how I feel about it. But it does say that this kind of talking point about like, Oh, it has to be in the first or they can't solve it. Like me and you have kind of probably overblown that a little bit. And that's fine. That's fine. And I will keep overblowing it because we had to watch Kevin White and Kenny Stills start for this team last year, and that's just kind of yes. how the, the conversation is going to be had through that. There was that extreme over there, so the correction is is the the conversation we're having all off season about how dire and how quickly this has to happen. But yeah, uh, I, that that is an interesting thing. It's just it's it's probably a harder position to scout than a lot of people realize. Yeah, the the reason why I I'm hung up on the question. It's because I don't like, like, you know, I mean, the, the facts says, they say what they say, right? You know, you can find guys in the second round, et cetera. And, and that, that's a convincing, that's a convincing, you know, piece of information there. Right. And so I was just thinking like, man, but like, like, let me put that in context. That just means that, does that means that these teams are super smart or did they just, you know, they looked up and got those guys, right? Like, the Saints wanted Mike Thomas, but are they, you know, if they knew Mike Thomas, Mike Thomas, maybe he gets drafted early, right? If they knew Alvin Kamara was Kamara, you know, he's maybe not a third-round pick. But I do think it is something, the scouting guy, being able to scout guys in subsequent rounds. I will I, say, I, I know for a fact they went into the Mike Thomas draft with the 100% goal going in there and taking Mike Thomas out of that draft. And sometimes you just yeah. know the value and how the board's going to fall, and you play it that way, and you get your guys still, and it can work out. Um it's it's a hard conversation to have because the way That's they had it smoke. last year, the way they had the the way they were last year, and then it's just like almost you can't let your foot off the the idea of like having to make a strong move to do something to fix this awful situation from a year ago, it, and that's just kind of where it is. But I will say when I saw that side, I was kind of like, man, am I like 
Okay, this is interesting. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's interesting. It is. Yeah. yeah. It is. I can't just blow it off like, oh, well, no, no, my take is my take. Like, I don't want to ever be that guy. <laughs> right? Right. I don't ever want to be so married to my opinion that I can't change it. Right. That's something that is, you know, is closed mindedness. Right. And so, but I, I do still think that, like, I don't think that they can play like that this year. Right. I don't think that this is the yeah, year no, for those right. type of games. Right. I think that, I mean, I think they need, I've been, I've been consistent about this. I would like to think that, you know, I've had my conviction about this point, but I think they need two guys, right? I think they should look, I think they need to add two wide receivers depending on the type of guy that they draft, right? There are some wide receivers that you can look at, you know, if, you know, say if you get a guy that can move around a little bit, a bigger guy, think of someone like maybe a George Pickens or someone, I'm just throwing names out there, right? Or even maybe even Drake London, right? Like those type of guys, you know, maybe you don't need a Jarvis Landry because you got, you know, those two guys are guys that you can move around. They can play in different spots. They have some versatility to their game, you know, and, and you can do some stuff with them and Mike because Mike can play outside, Mike can play inside. Those two guys can play outside, they can play inside, et cetera. So you get some, you get, you get some scheme adaptability there. So in that case, I think that you can draft, you can bring in one guy and, you know, maybe a camp bed or something, but I, I feel like you, 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 you've, you've addressed it on some level, but, you know, with other type of wide receivers, you bring a guy who's just going to play like mostly outside, et cetera. I think I do think you still need to look at, you know, looking and bringing in another player. Like, for instance, I know you and I, you and I spoke about it. I think that if you draft Olave, I think that Jarvis Landry should still should still be a priority. Right. Because those are two different skill sets. Right. And, and, and those are two different dimensions to an offense. And I think that your third wide receiver is a starter um, because 11 personnel is the king. Right. And so. But if you draft if you draft someone that can play in the slot, that can play outside, then I think you have a little bit more agency with that with with, with adding another wide receiver. So yeah, I'll put it like th- oh, go I'll ahead. put it like this: like if it's a trash board and the guy isn't there and they get forced to the second, fine. That's that's fine. Like all the wide receivers are gone, you go to the second. Like it just yeah. it just is what it is. That that's how it fell. And it's not like well now I'm drafting a second round receiver at 16 because I don't want people to be upset. That That's an idiot move. But if you by, bypass one of these guys and you wait until the second and then your guy in the second doesn't do what he needs to do, it's, it's, it's an unforgivable situation. If, if you do that and your guy in the second hits, we're never talking about the move. Oh, it was smart. They did this. You know, like, and that's they just got how what it they changes. wanted in the first. Wow. Look yeah. at the Saints play the draft yeah. board. <laughs> yeah. Right. So if it works out that, that conversation's never had. Now, if you draft a guy in the first and he bust, my my, you know, the way we're going to talk about it on here, it'll be well they they tried, you know, they, there was logic behind the pick and the guy just didn't work out. If you bypass these guys and your guy in the second doesn't work, it's you are continuing to neglect this yeah. position that hasn't been a serious yeah. effort to get young people in over time and da 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 da. Like all that stuff comes into play now. I think there's a, a nuanced conversation about their approach during the Super Bowl window of how they did it and how they kept going for it. And they won all these games and they were on the cusp and yeah. should have got somebody else in there. But look, th- all that's a bygone era where they're at now. You have to start getting people in. You mismanaged the situation last year. Your lack of uh, aggression, knowing that wide receiver one had this situation going on is kind of unforgivable. And now something has to happen. So, We'll see yeah. what they do with it. Uh, it'll be it'll be fascinating to see how it how it plays out. It's something that I I I want to be writing a story tomorrow about. I don't know how long <laughs> it's going to last. Like an hour from now about the new wide receiver. Yeah. And then I want to spend the next three months writing stories about how he's going to fit. And yeah. I, just just get them and just like, those are fun football articles to write. Right, those are yeah. things like where you can see the fit. You can see how they're going to use them. You know what you else can... is fun? Watching a good offense and. My Ooh. God, it's been two years. Like, just have mm. an offense that works, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. I do think that – I think they need to be aggressive. Like, I sometimes, like, you have a weakness on your team, and it's okay to be aggressive and just cut it off at the head, right? Because here's the thing. There's no such thing as having too many weapons, right? You can't – you just can't have too many weapons, right? It's It's just – it's not possible, right? If you're the 49ers and you got three, you got four good wide receivers, then you put Debo Samuel in the backfield, <laughs> right? It's just a creative offensive mind is going to find a way to use these guys and you find a way to take advantage of their skill sets. So be aggressive. Be aggressive. Take two wide receivers or take one and know, hey, Jarvis, by the way, you know, we're, let's talk on Sunday, right, after this draft. Like, be aggressive. Just, you know, 
cut the head off, kill the problem, pull the pull the pull the weed up by the root, and move on, right? And, and I think that that's the approach that they need to have now. That can be with one guy, that can be with two guys. It just it just depends on the nature of it. But I don't want to keep talking about <laughs> wide receiver. <laughs> I'm I'm ready to move on. There's a lot. There's like a bunch of other positions on the football field that you know that that require attention, right? And so I just think. You know, it, it would be nice if we could, you know, kind of transition past past this. So, and and you know, just just looking at this draft, right, and and just kind of you know moving on. Do you like? Do you think there's something here where you think that maybe you know, like in their mind, they're thinking like, wow, in 2017, we had this great draft. We had, you know, we've got Ramcheck, we got Lattimore, we got Marcus Williams, we got Alvin Kamara, we got. Um, uh, Trey uh, Trey Henderson. They even got Al Qadim Muhammad, who's still starting. <laughs> He's still starting somewhere in the NFL for the Colts. Who's a good, solid defensive end, right? Like, is do you think there's some notion in the front office where like they're looking at that 2017 draft and saying, "Hey, let's let's try to rekindle some of that flame. Let's try to bring that energy back and propel this team to a new height, kind of like that draft did." You mean like in this draft? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I you mean, know, you're trying to have the 2017 draft every year. That's like the best draft of yeah. Of I know, but the you got your you're first try, this year. You're trying to hit on. You're trying to hit on every single pick every year, though. So yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. But I, I can see a scenario where you look at this and you say, "Hey, look, guys, like we got two first round. Like, like we got it. We like this is the draft." Like, I see, yeah, I mean, I see the parallels you're, you're trying to draw there with having the two first round picks and everything. But like Sean talked about the romanticized 2006 draft every single year until 2017. And then it was he talked about the 2017 draft every single year after that, once he finally had one. So like they're trying to do that every year. But yeah, I mean, there, there's an opportunity here bringing those assets up, being set up. You can do something. You can get a couple starters. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that, there's uh, there's some parallels there. But um, do you think this draft is more critical than maybe the last two drafts let me rephrase the question like peyton turner pete warner or debo caesar ruiz zach bond uh adam troutman right like it's critical in the sense yeah i mean it's it's significantly more critical because they've brought everything up to this year and if you whiff this year oh that's you're right. lacking the next two years in terms of yeah. reloading so you need to hit you got to hit now yeah yeah, I think it's extremely critical because they created a circumstance by by bringing everything up to yeah. this year. So I don't think it's necessarily more so or less so in terms. Like I think every draft's pretty critical. Like if you have a bad draft, like it's setting your team back a little bit, and then you got to start spending in free agency, and you can overcome a bad draft in you know whatever one of these years when you have seventeen behind it. But you that's don't what have I was gonna say the seventeen allowed them to have some maybe subsequent drafts that weren't as yeah. good, right? But I think that that will just run dry a little bit, right? It feels like, okay, 17 carried you up until this point. Now you right. got to hit another home run. That's kind of what I was getting at. I don't know if they need a home run, but I mean, they got to hit on these picks. They got to get good players. I mean, you got, you got to, you made this trade. So yeah, I mean, it, it's absolutely, I think, I think they've, they've created a, a curve for themselves. That's, that's a little bit shorter than all the other teams because you yeah. aren't, there's nowhere to go from here. Like if you don't, if you don't like, let's, let's say they draft a tackle and the tackle doesn't hit, you're screwed at tackle. Like there yeah, isn't, yeah. you're, you're going to have to spend massive money in free agency or there, there's no way to back it up. And I would say this, like it's, it's a survivable situation, right? Like James Hurst, I think is, is fine. It's a survivable situation with him. I that agree. line isn't, that line is not, it is not going to thrive like how it's built. So if you don't do that, if you don't take a tackle this year, like there isn't, there isn't anywhere. Like you're, you're making a two year, a two year commitment here. And I would say, look at the runs to the left side, outside zone. And I, I'm telling you, Pete wasn't in there. Okay, Pete wasn't in there. Two years ago, Alvin got 2.3 yards before first contact. Outside zone runs to the left. Last year, 0 0.6. It's not mm -hmm. going to work. It's not going to work. You got to be better there. Andrews mm -hmm. Pete coming back is going to help that. But I think that's a bad not, number, man. Yeah, <laughs> not having number. not having Armstead out there is 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 that like what are you gonna do? Like where where does it? Yeah. So if you want to thrive, if you want to be a team that runs, you want to be a team that play actions. I think you need to have a better left side of your offensive line, and, and again, you can survive it. Again, I think Pete coming back probably takes that zero point six up to one point seven, or you know one point eight, one point nine. You know, but it, it's not going to be the the top tier, you know, of what it is. And 
if that's how you want to play football, like you need those pieces. So I, I think, I think that's more important. Um, when you look at the lack of assets down the road, like some of these moves that they don't make, you can get by, you can get by, you don't have to draft a tackle. You can get by, but what are you going to do next year? Where's it going to come from? If, if this situation doesn't improve to it, to the point where you want it to be. Yeah. I mean, you don't have a, yeah. Cause you don't have your first from next year. And it's the, the trade. They, they did trade their 2024 second. So they will have yeah. a second next year, but you, that's just yeah. not a position you want to be in. Right. That, that's right. It's, it's, it's just not ideal. And, I mean, look, I mean, you know, there's a train of thought. You can say that, you know, you can some certain teams get far without great offensive lines. And I think there's some validity, uh, some validity to that, you know, but I, I just don't think I think this team has had the most success when they've had mm-hmm. good guys up front. Uh, we've said that like a dozen times. I feel like we say it all the time and I'm, I'm going to keep saying it because it's true. <laughs> but, yeah, I just think that. I'd rather have a good offensive line than a bad one. <laughs> Let yeah. me say that, right? One and of these, so, one of these high level spots, so like, is just it's just not gonna have a five year answer. Like, quarterbacks probably not gonna have a five year answer. Offensive tackle, like one of them, like there's just too many things and only two picks. And one of these things is not gonna have that. Like, you're not gonna leave Thursday thinking like, okay, they're good here for five years. And that's a false sense of security because these guys got to hit and play. Well I mean, and I don't know. I mean, too, what, but, what about what about? I mean, the second round pick. That's the. I think well, that, it's a four. Yeah. That's a four year. I'm just saying, like a like a straight up like first round surefire answer. Like after Thursday night, like one of these spots is not going to have it. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Quarter, but, you, you can't you can't draft a quarterback. You can't draft a wide receiver, and you can't draft an OT unless you trade back somehow and acquire another pick. But like pick. one of these one of these high value positions is just it's not going to be answered fully. And then you know if you don't take the quarterback in the first, you aren't going to feel after Friday that there's the long term answer at quarterback because you know. Second round QB in this draft is Sam Howe, man. That's my guy. I love yeah, Sam. Yeah, well, I wouldn't. <laughs> I love they, Sam Howe. Look, I like Sam Howe too. I think, but like, I, if they draft him, I'm not certain. You know, I'm not yeah. certain that they have their their quarterback in the I future. I think that's fair. I mean, I just I think the 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 psychology behind a second round quarterback <laughs> doesn't allow you to. It's right. crazy if a guy get drafted at, at 33 <laughs> versus 32. The the notion of that player is like. Black and white, right? The psychology of the draft is is pretty intense, but you know, I mean, that's why we love it, man. That's why that's why it draws the crowds and the ratings that it that it that it draws. And I I just think that's it's it's one of those things. So um, but yeah, so uh, you know, Loomis did speak today, and he you know he kind of alluded to you know his their their thought process their thought process behind the trade and kind of how you know uh, you know the, the the Philadelphia Eagles actually initiate initiated the trades talks with them so uh, we got a clip here uh, with Mickey speaking about it and let's listen to see what he got to say it's an opportunity to get I think another good player um, a year ahead of time for a value that we liked that's in a nutshell what it was Mickey, who initiated yeah, I think I think that was how he he was looking to you know he had three first round picks and he was looking to um, shift one to next year. And for you guys, shift one to this year is that just kind of you like where your roster is at? You got some guys you like to build around now as opposed to maybe. Yeah, again, I just I you know th- I think it's an opportunity to get you know a really good player a year before we would get him ordinarily, and and I liked the value of what we gave up versus what we got. Was any of that tied to how little you spent in free agency? The, the no, I. No, not really. Was that the main goal uh, to get talent? Yes. Yeah, I think that's always the main goal for us, <laughs> right? But and I'm not being facetious. I'm I'm saying yes. You're right. It, you know, we're trying to, you know, acquire as many good players as we can, and and uh, this is another opportunity. You know, you you have free agency, you have trades, and you have the draft, and and uh, yeah. So this is this is one of those avenues. All right. So one thing he said that was interesting there was that, you know, again, you know, Philly kind of initiated the trade there. You made a really good point about that earlier. So I'm I'm not even going to, like, tee you up on that. Um, if you guys are, like, not following Nick, like, on Twitter, I don't know what you're doing. Like, he does the diet. It's a lot of information that goes out there, like, daily stories about just different things about the Saints. So I uh, just want to plug that real quick. But, uh, yeah, just talk a little bit about what he said and, like, what did you – like, is there anything that you think that means? Is there any, like – backdoor meaning behind him saying you know kind of some of the things he said there i think it takes a little bit of wind out of sale out of the sales of, of the people that said immediately after the trade oh well this is a precursor to another move because if how we initiated the move 
it seems to me like it wasn't like the Saints were like, let's acquire the second pick so that we could put them together and target this player up there. Kind of <laughs> like uh, I'm a little guilty. <laughs> <laughs> it it kind of seems like I'm not, and I'm not saying they won't trade up or anything like that. So like, it just kind of seems like maybe an opportunity presented itself and they're like, Oh, all right, well this makes sense. And they kind of look through it and okay. If we have two first round picks, this is what we, we can do. Okay. How we, we, we accept that deal. It kind of seems like that's how that one kind of played out. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, look, going in this, like, I, I would be pretty surprised if, like, a, there's a move up for a quarterback. Like, I just, I just don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Do you, would you be surprised if there was a move up for another position? Uh, well, what do you say move up? Do you mean two first move up, or do you mean a move up period, like a first move up period a for a quarterback? I don't see, I don't see it happening. Um, okay. Could be wrong. Okay. Could be wrong. But it, like, my hmm. gut feeling is that that won't happen. You know, I, I think as it sits now, it's probably more likely than not they stay in place. But like with the deflating value, like if there's stories about all these teams trying to move out. So like if the value of moving up is cheap, I could still see them move up. I, I just don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I see the, them giving up the two first to do it, though. I just I don't know. I don't That's know if I, I see that happening. First and a third or a first and a second. In the, in the second. Like, do yeah, you if think you can, will... if you can if you can package a first and a second and get Charles Cross? Like, I, I'm doing it. Like, I'm making that. That's an easy deal for me to make. I have that mm-hmm. answer there. I'm drafting a wide receiver and then I'm out of the first round. And, you know, I think that's a and then I'm signing Honey Badger after the draft. That that would be my, my three step thing. You get your safety, you get your wide receiver, you get your OT. And I think that's a. Maybe the best outcome right there. Like yeah, honestly, be. yeah. Be. I mean, if you're if you're looking to be a competitive team now, I think that's an extremely good way to go about doing it. But if not, I think you can stay in place, get two good players, and they'll feel uh, you know, I think I think that they probably ran the scenarios to where they know what it worse what they're gonna come out with if they stay in those two spots, and I think they're okay with it, and that's why you make yeah. that deal. Yeah, yeah, he spoke about that in his press conference. Like, you know, they kind of do a lot of preparation for worst case scenarios, um, which you know obviously makes sense. So, so, so when you say you, you'd be surprised if they trade up only if it's for a quarterback, but not for another position, I would be. I'll put it like this: I'd be shocked if they traded up for a quarterback, and okay. if they traded up for another position, I'd be like mildly surprised. Okay, so what do you think is more likely them? trading up for a quarterback or them trading down <laughs> i could see a trade down i could i mean i think there's some some players that that make sense mm-hmm. a little bit below that range at some of their positions in need so i could see i could see a trade down too i look just given their history though i would be really surprised by a trade down too but i think there's there's logic behind it and then you know if you like if you don't love trevor penning and you want an offensive tackle i think it makes sense to get out of that spot if he's there yeah, and then I take agree. somebody else like so, so there's some of those things that I think would make sense. It's just a matter of, you know, who do they like and, and how do they want to attack it? But if you can acquire more assets and get players you like, yeah, yeah, that's something I'd do. And, and I think not having picks next couple of years being depleted, if there's an opportunity to regroup and, and build that up and get your middle class, and, yeah. you know, some guys that can push for starters and all that stuff. I, I think, it, I think there's, there's a lot of sound reasoning behind a, a move back with one of those two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 a good point. Just in the fact that, you know, you don't have a one next year. You don't know how you you don't have a two in twenty twenty four. So, yeah, it may make sense to recoup maybe some of that draft capital for next year's draft, or maybe just you know load up more on this draft. And you know, Luma said, you know, we get the young players in the building a year early, right? And so uh, you know, those are both you know realistic scenarios that I think that they could benefit from. So. um yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. I, 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 I don't think that they move up for a quarterback, neither. I wouldn't be surprised, though. <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked because, I don't know, I, the Saints, right, it's just things happen and, you know, they just – they're aggressive. And if they see something they like, you know, they've had all these guys in and maybe they fell in love with one and kept it in the house and they're like, all right, we just – you know, maybe just three people know about it and they go and get the guy right. And But I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think it's likely, but I wouldn't be surprised just because it's the draft and it's crazy. Um, I'm just I'm not sure that you draft either one of them and feel like you have you have your guy. And I I, I don't think I, I would be surprised if anybody really feels that way about any of them. And I feel like if you're taking one of these guys, you're kind of you're kind of you kind of need to. You know, like I don't I don't know if you're drafting off of <clears> pure <throat> desire at a certain point. With, with with either one of these guys, I don't know if you're looking at them like a Trevor Lawrence. Like I don't know if you're drafting one of them. And, and man, 
I feel great about this. It's kind of like we need a quarterback and we got to do something. And these are the guys and I, I'll try and see with one of them. But I, I see a scenario with both of them in three years where you're back in the draft looking for another QB. And that's not the situation you want to be in. And if I'm the Saints moving up for one of these guys, I would need to feel super convinced. And I, I don't know that you can get to that place with either one of them. That's just my personal opinion. Um, they could feel differently and we'll see. And yeah, we'll watch I mean, and no see wins. how it evaluates. Yeah. But I just think, you know, based off of how I've watched them draft over the years, I would be surprised if they made, if they made one of those moves up for one of these guys. Like okay. it would just be weird if this was the year you did it after all these years. Okay. So, so that bring that brings up an interesting, interesting question for you. Say you're on the board at 16 or say 19. Say you got your wide receiver. Right, and both of the quarterbacks are on the board right there for you. Would you one? Would you consider picking one? And two, if you if you were the Saints and you had to grab one of those guys, which one of those guys are you grabbing? I'd probably bypass honestly. I, like I mm-hmm. honestly would. Like we're at the point. But yeah, I just I feel like there's other things that need to be done, and and I don't know if either one of them's an, an answer. Like I said, I so if you're taking one of them in the first, like I just feel like you you feel like one of them's got to be an answer. If they're going to pull a lottery ticket, I'd rather they do it at 49 than 16 or 19. And I feel like you're pulling a lottery ticket on either one of these guys. I if I had one. to take one of the two, yeah, pick one. I'm taking I'm taking Kenny Pickett. Um, mm. I think I think Malik might have more upside, but I think the possibility of, of the downside is is significant. Much, yeah, it's significant. So, but I I feel I don't know if either one of them have enough of the the upside. So like so so. Like I said, I'm wait. I would wait until 49. If if I felt the need to take a QB, I I would just do it there. If it's you know just kind of a like a, well maybe we'll see how this works type situation, which is kind of what I feel like you'd be entering with either one of these guys because I don't know if they're coming in and knocking off Jameis right away, and I don't know if they're your long term person. And you know I wouldn't kill him for it. I would. I'm always. You know, if you like someone and you're you're, yeah, you're king quarterback, right? Yeah. yeah. If you like someone and, and and you believe in them enough to do it, like I will, I'm gonna step back and say, all right, let's see how this plays out. Like we do with everything, because that's the logical approach to any the of this logical stuff. Logical approach, I, how we do I it. I don't think I don't think enough of my opinions to think that I'm always right. And, <laughs> you know, so so that's just not. I'm not interested in that. But I'm just saying, if you, put, if you you put me in the GM chair right now and said, what would you do? What I would do is not take one of them. That would personally be my thing. I don't get that feeling from them, and yeah. I need that feeling from them. When I watch Chris Olave, I have a feeling of, all right, this is how it's going to go. This this is a safe pick. And that feeling of safety can be significantly wrong. There's been a lot of players I've liked over the years that didn't hit. There's been players I like that did hit. So I don't have a you know 100% success rate. I'm just saying, like, you know, through my – years of doing this like if you're asking me what i would do in that chair like i would i just wouldn't take one of them yeah yeah i feel you i feel you i I, if they take a quarterback even if they move up for a quarterback like i don't think i would ever go at a team for trying to get their future right and you you and i are on the same page on this you know by the way you know not announcing anything here but like and i think with quarterback if you draft a quarterback it can't be like oh i want one but I'm going to wait to the second. Like, I kind of feel like you got to have your guy, all right? It's like, you can't, like, with a, I think with a tackle, you can say, all right, we need to tackle this draft, right? Like, you know, you got to, you, and you can pick a tackle and you can be successful with it. With a quarterback, I think it's one of those positions where it's like, all right, I'm going to look at the guys. I'm going to see if I like any of them. If I don't, then I'm not taking one, even if I need one, just because, you know, if you don't believe in a the guy, then it's kind of right. like one of those things where it's, it's not going to work, right? It's not going to work. So, well, if you don't believe in them, that therefore you're you're making a reach at a spot like that's exactly exactly. And, and the only reaches that matter are the reaches in and your draft work. room. The reaches on Mel Kuyper's <laughs> grading scale do not matter, right? Like it There's doesn't room. matter. No, it's how, what you believe in your room, and if yeah. you believe in one of them, take them. If you don't, don't. So if they believe in one of them and take them, the the next podcast, the next article on the website is going to be here's how this could work. Yeah. But personally, like I wouldn't make the pick myself and. That's okay. Yeah. Like if they do something different, that's okay. But we'll see. I'm just telling you, you know, keep yeah. it a buck. Like before the draft, you're asking yeah. me what I think about him. I'm, I don't, I don't have that. You know, this guy's going to be a number one starter. Belief in either one a of conviction them. Conviction in there, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I have my questions about both of them. I, I'm pretty. It's pretty public on how I feel about them. I think that 
if you force me to take one of those guys for the Saints, I think I was I feel I feel pretty decent about Pickett. I, I you know a lot I'm I'm probably higher on Pickett than a lot of people. And that's okay. Just you know, he he just does everything. He does everything. Like he he faces NFL defenses. He faces NFL blitzes. It's like on cameras. I mean, cameras on tape. You can see it. He does stuff that an NFL quarterback does, right? But I I, I would probably say Malik just because, and I would be betting. And this is this goes against everything I believe in, by the way. But I would just be betting on the kid, right? Like every I with this quarterback draft class, I haven't been able to really get my hands around it. But I know the best evaluation that you can do on a quarterback is knowing the guy and talking to him and speaking to him, right? And so I'm like, well, I'm never going to get access to that. But I just went and I did some reading about Malik, just kind of seeing what people say and feel about him. And, you know, it's just, you know, I think a lot of the, a lot of the you know, reasons that you may succeed or fail in the NFL as a quarterback has to do with, like, your work and your drive and stuff like that. And I just read a lot of good stuff about him that he's, you know, he's a worker. He can he can figure out yeah. the physical traits are there. And also think that, like, you, like with Kenny Pickett, I wouldn't, I would play Kenny Pickett year one if I drafted him. I just believe he's ready to play. My, with, my, prob- my problem with both of them is I think in a normal year, neither one of them is a first rounder. Like if you told me either one of these guys are forty nine, I would feel I would feel good about them at forty nine. Like that's I don't worth think a there's a big difference between Pickett and Mac Jones, like as prospects though. To be honest, I don't. Think, I don't think, I don't think Mac Jones was like down. really like a like a surefire first rounder either. It was just someone that's where you have had to take him to get the chance. But like this guy being the first QB off the board, like I just don't. Man, I don't. This quarterback, I don't see this rounds don't matter with quarterbacks. I mean, quarterbacks got their own drafting scale, though, right? It's right. like you got every other position, but and you got these in guys. a normal year. Like I know what you're saying about my in a normal year, though. Like I, I just don't think that either one of these guys hit, hit the first round. Like last year, I don't last think either, year was I don't think last year either one of them hit the first round. And I think Matt goes before Pickett, a hundred years out of a hundred years. Like I just think that's that's how hmm. it would go every time. And okay, yeah, I, I mean, don't, I, I don't think in a, I don't think in a normal year you're looking at Kenny Pickett or Malik Willis and being like, is he worth it at 16? I think in a normal year, the answer is always absolutely no. And I just don't, I don't like the value of it there. And if you're taking someone in that range, man, you got to feel really good about it. And I don't know if you can get there with either one of them. I just, I, I don't. Um, but again, if somebody did, I, I can't really, like if you thought Kenny Pickett was worth it there, like I can't really argue against it. It's just, we're both making a projection off the information and it's, yeah. I don't know for sure that he's your starter in five years. And when you draft a guy, like, I don't think you want to end up in like a Baker Mayfield situation. I think that sets you back. It, it's just not, it's just not a good thing for, I think you, if you aren't a hundred percent sold, like just, just wait, just wait and figure it out, uh, you know, down the road. Cause the worst thing you can do here is, is make a pick you don't believe in. And then it doesn't hit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's fair. And my, my, my belief is if they make a pick, then everything that we've just spoken about, they feel good about it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. And if, right, that, if like, that's the information they're batting on, that's that's cool. And then we'll again, we'll, all right, right, we'll see how right, it goes. Right. We'll see how and, it goes. And I'll say this, right? And I don't want to be on quarterbacks the whole day, but I will say, like, I think what the information that we have in the public realm and everybody who's not an NFL team, I think you got about forty percent at most of what you need to evaluate an NFL evaluate quarterbacks. Because I just feel like the real information is you get it from talking to their coaches. Their positional coaches, uh, maybe teams that played against them, being in a room with them, seeing how quick they learn. I know, you know, they, they it's these, you know, you hear about it. Oh, we bought a guy in our in a building for a day, and we put him through, you know, our offense, and he was able to spit it back out, right? Like if if Malik can come in and like r- learn the few plays that you give him, then you're gonna feel way better about Malik than just what you see from him on tape. So. It's, you know, again, we're all guessing here. Like the information that we have, that's all we got to go off of, right? But it's really just like such a small piece of the puzzle that it makes it like super tough and even more so for quarterbacks. Yeah, so, the um, biggest thing for Malik would be like, can he handle like these play calls and right, right, like, coming right. from you know coming from Liberty? And I think it it's a fair question for any quarterback coming from a, a little school. Like, can you do this? Stuff? Yep. I think it's a fair question for Adam Troutman playing tight end coming from a little school. Can you retain this information? Okay, what are you doing on this play? Check back ten minutes later, see if you can still do it. I think, you know, just if you're coming from a place where maybe the offenses and the defenses you're going against aren't as complex, like those are all fair questions. Those are things we, we can't answer. Right. The league has tons of talent. Like it's oh. just, it's just, it oh, needs to be right. developed. It just, it just needs to be developed a little bit. And there's, there's extreme, like I think, I think major boom and major, you know, this, this didn't work out. And I think those are kind yeah. of the two scenarios where, 
you know, it's just I don't know if the Saints <laughs> need to make that gamble at this point. Yeah. That, that's I, I would be thing. very entertained if they took a quarterback, though. I'd be real I, with you. I would love I would it be if they did. So entertained. It, it'd be, I want it'd be them to do it. Kind of. Yeah, Cam yeah, yeah. Just interesting. The next few years would be it's, right. It's, it's not that it's on in you know, I think Jameis is an incredibly interesting storyline too, Me just too. seeing Absolutely. seeing how he goes going forward. Absolutely. But yeah, I'm Absolutely. always for interesting things to talk about. Quarterback, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like nothing's more fun than like having this young quarterback. And I haven't I haven't had a chance to do that with the Saints, just like seeing a young quarterback grow like you know, as a starter and just sit for a year, grow after grow after grow. Like I that's why I said Malik, like let Jameis start. Like if, I, if Pickett should just play year one, in my opinion. Let Jameis start and then sit this kid for a year. And if you, but anyway, it's it's a fun conversation. Uh, uh, but there's other positions in the draft, so let's get, let's get to some of them. Um, kind of on the same notion, would you rather? And I'm gonna give you another scenario here because I know you're you're you, I know this is one of the prospects that you like, right? So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to like corner you on this one. If Hamilton is there in the first round, they need a safety. And he's he's a safety, and he's a good one. So, would you prefer to have him in the first, or say Jaquan Brister, and maybe one of the later rounds? Oh, give me if, Hamilton. Yeah, give me Hamilton. Yeah, definitely. Oh, well, I thought you was going to say your boy Brister. I, I'm no, gonna, I mean, I, I like I like I like him in the second, and I like the idea a wide yeah. receiver, offensive tackle early, yeah. and then uh, safety in the second. But I mean, I think when that the talent's there, you flip it on its head. His forty mm-hmm. times a little weird. You know, the the someone told me he ran it on an angle or something like that. that's weird too but like mm-hmm. when you watch him play there's nothing weird about it i, I think he's <laughs> an incredibly good player, good player and man. his tape is good man yeah um, his tape is good his and he, has, is he good. has a chance to be one of those safeties that like really impact a defense and i think those guys are are kind of rare and when, yeah. when your safety can kind of be like the identity the backbone of your defense i think i think that's almost always a really good situation yeah. for a team uh you know, Honey Badger being that guy for his teams, I thought was a really good thing for his team. Earl, uh, just whenever, you know, a stronger or, you know, can't having a Cam Chancellor type, having an Earl type, like anytime like your safety is like one of those guys that the defense is built around, I think you're just like a is usually pretty defensive good. personality thing that just yeah. comes with it. Ed yeah. Reed, I mean, these guys, Tra- uh, yeah. Troy Palomalu, I'm, we're going back. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, the kid from um, Ed Reed's still around here too, man. So shout out to Ed. Yeah, shout out to Ed, man. Seen him the um, other day. Oh, the oh, uh, Sanders from Colts was one of my favorite ones from Erie PA, man. Oh, oh, for real, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turn up, man. I would if he would have been healthy. If he would have stayed healthy, I think he would have been a Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. I, no I, I really believe it. Like, yeah, I just I still watch his highlights. <laughs> I'm like, man, this dude's <laughs> it's a missile. But I'm a little surprised you didn't choose Brisk. I think Brit. I think he fits DA, DA's defense so well just because he's like one of those like multi-dimensional safeties who can like play all over. He can do, you know, a few different things. And I, I think DA, I think he really believes, I think if you give him a good safety, I think he's going to turn him into a good player. Right. I, I, I really believe that. So part of me is like, you know, Brisker would just be so good in his defense with all his talent around him. But Hamilton is one of those guys that's just good. And you can just end the sentence right there. And I think Brisker is good too, but I think Hamilton is, you know, he's obviously a high, high, highly rated player. But yeah, I'd be, I'll say this: if they leave the draft with any one of those players, then oh, yeah. I think that's your. I mean, you 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 pair both of those guys up. Both of those guys can you know play split safety with Marcus May. I think you just, I think you're set back there with the talent that you have back there. So, um, what about uh? I'm I'm just getting you on the record for this. This is a loaded question, but what about um? Uh, if if Jamo and Olave both on the board, Jam- Jameson Williams and Olave on the board. I'm taking Olave. Taking Olave. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going there. Um what is I don't your... the information on the ACL. You know, that that's a big thing for me. I don't have the information on it. That's fair. So you know, so you, wh- whatever you their medicals say. And he might come back from it and be fine. I mean, that's just something I don't know. I don't know. Like the the player you're asking me to draft, like he doesn't have the same knees. So that's, you know, that's a tough thing. So, so when we're talking about two high level guys, I'm, I'm going to just veer towards the safer one. And so if, if they both were there. healthy, would you, would you make the same decision or would you, I don't think more? so. I don't think so. And you know, okay. I think it's close enough though, that you're good either way. That's, so, that's probably fair. That's probably yeah. Fair. So yeah. it's close enough that, that like, you know, on that coin flip that falls heads up for Alabama <laughs> on the, you know, when you yeah. take the knee, like, Okay, the wind blew, and now it just went to to tails. So it's, I think it's like kind of that close for me. Yeah, I feel, you. I feel you. The fit for I this you. team, I, I like a lot for Alave. So I mean, that's just kind of 
yeah kind yeah. of where i go with it but i don't necessarily know that in a, a net neutral situation that Olave has a better career than jameson williams so you know but yeah um, if i'm signing for this, if I for sign this situation James, i like him if i draft jamo i'm going to holla at jarvis as soon as the draft is over. Well, both of those guys, but definitely J-Mo, just because, you know, you may not have him until October. So, um, no, he's probably definitely going to start on Pup. It, that, there's some reports out there. We don't know how true they are. They say the knee looks good, you know, October return. But I mean, Yeah, I've heard that he can't, that he that he can only run straight line and there's no lateral movement yet. Oh, see, yes, the agents. That's what I was about to say. Agents put out information that they want you to read, right? So, um, but yeah, I, I, I don't have enough information on medicals to speak about that, but just as a prospect, I'd go Jamo, Jamo for real, just because he has he does something no one else in this in this draft can do, and he's just a game breaker. Like, <laughs> like he just has this unique one elite skill that will be good in the NFL. If that's all he can do, then you know he'll be successful there. So, um, what's the position that you think that they could maybe take that may surprise some people? It could be the first round, second round, third round, whatever. Just like just from what you've seen, what you're hearing, the guys you've watched. Are there any positions that you think that I mean, like, man, I wasn't expecting that, like linebacker, tight end. Yeah, I can see know, linebacker. Corner. I can see corner. Yeah. I mean, I think those are all possibilities. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So just let's finish this with like a, a little, you know, a little game, right? Just have a little fun before the pod. And then we're going we gonna to let you guys get up out of here, uh, watch your NBA games. And, uh, you know, we're going to start getting ready for drafts tomorrow. So the Saints pick at, let's do pick, let's say pick 19. Let's just say pick 19 and make it interesting. How many quarterbacks do you think go? And this is like high-level draft stuff, not, not even Saints-specific, but it's just interesting because draft is fun. What is the over-under on how many quarterbacks are selected before the Saints' second pick in the first round with the line being 1.5? Oh, I'll take the under on that for sure. Oh, so you think one quarterback is going? You, so you think before nineteen, only one quarterback will be chosen? I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. A little bit tougher. Number of wide receivers taken before the Saints' first pick, with the line being two point five. I think it'll probably be three. I think London, uh, Williams, and Williams Wilson. And, yeah, Wilson. So you're going the over going over there yeah i'm going over and i think a lot of it will be there um the one thing okay. I, I yeah i don't know i don't think the falcons are gonna take one i don't know if i don't know what that team gonna do man they need everything just take the that's really a bpa situation <laughs> just take <laughs> the best player on the draft board because you need all positions <laughs> I, I think i think philly would take williams over can we talk uh, about Philly? Like that's three straight years with a first round round receiver. That is like if they something... take yeah, if they take one, I think I think they'd take him over Olave. I think mm. Olave is maybe a little too similar to to Smith. To, so. to, to to both of those, not Rager, uh, Devante uh, that they took last year. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think if they took one, it'd be Williams. I, I don't, I, you know, I'm just guessing here based on rosters and and stuff like that. But I, I would take the over on three. Okay. Okay. It, the over okay. on two point five and and say three. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And uh, I feel like this one's just way too easy for you, but let's go. All right. The number of offensive tackles for, well, let's just say offensive linemen, forget tackles well, taken before the Saints pick. And I am saying I'm, I'm drawing the line at 3.5. I mean, I think, I think Penning, Neal, uh, Akeem and Cross are all gone. So you think Penny's gone before the Saints pick. So you're going yeah, over. Yeah, I'm going. Over. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, man. Yeah, I'm. I, 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 I think I might go. I want to say three there, but I think offensive tackles just have a way of like just getting drafted earlier, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. Baltimore obviously stands as a team that looks like they may draft a tackle. I think for some reason I got Baltimore at Trevor Penning or Joyce Coll. Carlo Lafagas, I, I just butcher that young man's name every time it comes on the screen. Those just seem like Raven players to me for some reason. I really can't explain it. Uh, all right, I'm, man, sorry. I got one more for you. One more for you. What do you do if you get when you draft, if you get on the board and the wide receivers are just like wiped out? Like if you're the Saints, do you try to trade down or you just take the best wide receiver that's left on the board? I probably trade down. Me too. 
Me too. Yeah, because I yeah. that second that second cluster, I don't know if they're worth taking one there, and I think you can trade down and still get a really really good player. Yeah, yeah. I'm just drop me in a for just give me George Pickens and I'll make it work. Because uh, that's that's my guy. I think if they took George Pickens at 16, I would be happy because <laughs> I think he's that good. But uh, some other stuff that probably will stop that from happening. So, I, I would I would drop down again. This is kind of goes to what we were talking about earlier. Like in the absolute doomsday scenario, I would drop down. And if I couldn't drop down, I'd just draft players that are worthy of those spots. And yeah. Yeah. Figure it out in the second. If you got figure to it out and, in a second. And you if you gotta if you gotta go two and three to move up into two to get the guy that you want a wide receiver, do that then. But don't do make it. it don't make a mistake at sixteen and nineteen off of desperation because yeah, you're just making a more desperate situation. Yeah. You're, you're not making your team as good as it could be if you're if you're making a move and you aren't trusting the year of of rankings you did and you're saying you know what this yeah. guy that we have 34th taking him at 16 because we just got in the do no you, you can, that isn't how you can do things so yeah i mean as uncomfortable as it would make everybody uh that's that's the move you can't make yeah olave jamo garrett wilson all off the board don't i mean i i would i don't want i'm not a, i'm not i don't want london in that spot you know, I, I would I would totally understand the move down there too. So um listen guys, all right. I got one more thing for this entire podcast. Everyone listening, go to Norlands.football if you're not a subscriber and use the code draft season for twenty percent off a NOF subscription. First payment at any plan. First payment any plan. Any plan. That's the main thing that I need before we head out. So you guys support us, man. We appreciate it. We are we're changing stuff up around here. Um, if you guys have not watched the Saturday pod that we did, it was a bonus pod that we did. I was in I was in the city. We recorded. We had we you know we it, I felt like I was in at, at Bristol, Connecticut, like ESPN. If in that joint, we was in there. I was looking Nick. I was looking at Nick in the eyes, and we was talking football, and it was it was it was it was it was, it was good, man. So um, yeah, we're, we're changing things up. We're 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 adding just things to what we do on like just different layers, whether it's, you know, social media content, you know, um, how we record these pods, how, you know, we present what we're, what we're showing to you guys live, all of that stuff is just, we're always looking to upgrade. And um, yeah. So if you guys are got any recommendations, always let me know. But like I said, just go sign up and support us because your support allows all this to happen. So um, the drafts tomorrow, make sure that you are subscribed and following everything going on at New Orleans football, because it's going to be loaded load it load it load it load it with draft content so uh check us out subscribe to us follow us on twitter uh do everything you can to support us you guys be safe we'll see you probably tomorrow <laughs> with that said thank you guys for listening we'll see you soon enough we